Hi everybody, this is Schoology Tips Part 3, I suppose. You can see right here the items that we're going to be working on and learning today. Feel free to skip around and view the items that you need, or you can watch the entire video if you just want to learn everything you can. You can pause it, play it back, do whatever helps you. Let's get started. Our first tip here is how to add other people as an administrator into your class. So I'm going to start by going to my concert band class. I'm going to go down here to members. And you see there's a nice screen here. This lists all the students you've currently got listed in your class. I'm going to go to add members. And now you're allowed to search for any of the students or teachers in Silver Creek High School you can see here. If you want to add somebody from another of the Silver Creek schools, if you click the little drop down arrow, you can find all of those folks and the Silver Creek School Corporation as well. But I'm going to go into the search box and I'm going to search for Mr. Day. I generally add Mr. Day as an administrator in all my classes just so he can see what I'm doing. It's important. I'll click add member. And now you can see that he is added right here in my class. I'll go off to the little gear off here to the right and click the make admin and confirm. And now if I go to the admin panel here, you can see that Mr. Day is now an administrator of my concert band class, just the way he's always wanted. Let's show you all about how the notifications work inside of Schoology. This little bell will light up when you have notifications and it'll tell you helpful things like when somebody has turned in homework or if there's an email or other kind of question through Schoology. You can configure these to work however you would like. You do this by going to your name, hitting the drop down arrow, going to settings, and then finding the notification tab here. You can turn on or off basically any kind of notification you can imagine. So if you would like to get rid of certain things after you respond to them, or if you would like to change notifications as soon as anything is commented, you can basically go through this list and find all the notifications you would want to have for basically anything. <laughs> Next, I'm going to show you how to upload a PDF to your class as an assignment. I'm going to go into one of my classes, add materials, add assignment, and give this a name and a due date and the number of points and a category. Then I'm going to go to the description box here and you can see there's a small button that says file. If you click that, this will allow you to grab a PDF from your computer find whichever one you would like and open it. It will now drop that into this assignment. I'll hit create and this will create an assignment that has as a part of it the PDF that I would like. So this could be any PDF that you would need the students to work on. I can view this which will open up a separate tab and show what this is. This is just some theory homework. The students then could print this off and do the homework and then upload a picture of that in the submission tab, which you can't see here because this is not a true student account. But there in the student's side, there would be a submission tab where they could take a picture of that and post it back to you. Or if they have some bigger skills and they know how to edit PDFs directly using Acrobat, they could actually fill out the work without any paper using Acrobat and the built-in uh, text tools, depending on how complicated that is. They could type directly onto the PDF and then upload that same PDF back to you. But that's kind of complicated and relies on your students having some ability to do that. I would suggest just using PDFs to be able to have the students print or work on something, and then they can take a picture of it if there's something that you need to be turned back into you. Now I'm going to demonstrate to you how to update and sync your grades in between Schoology and Infinite Campus. So I'm going to go into one of my courses and along the left hand side you'll see there is a grade book. I'll select grade book. I'll have to blur out some of these names so you'll have to forgive me. But you can see that I have my students here and there's already an assignment and I'm going to give one of my students here full points, 10 points for their assignment. And then there's the small sync changes to infinite campus one roster. And If you push that this will automatically sync your grades and I'll show you what it looks like on the infinite campus. If you've done this for the first time, when you go back to your infinite campus and you find the gradebook that corresponds with the class that you're teaching, 
you'll see that you have an uncategorized assignment notification that pops up right here on Infinite Campus. If you click this, it'll bring up a dialog box that asks you how you want to treat the assignment that is coming from Schoology. This is the name of the assignment, a chunk submission page, and it's going to ask how I want this to be included in the grading book. Pretty simple, just select term grade. Then it's going to ask for a category, and if you've created your categories, you can select among all your categories here. I haven't done that in my Infinite Campus yet, but I'll just select uncategorized assignment. And then the assigned date and the due date are pulled across automatically from Schoology. So those things will not be able to be edited in Infinite Campus. You have to make sure that they are correct in Schoology. The same goes for the name. Uh, you can edit that in Infinite Campus, but it's much easier if you have it named the way you need to in Schoology. And once you have this set, you hit Save All. And then you'll get a notification that one assignment has been aligned. Hit OK. Close. And now you can see that this has automatically pulled across from Schoology. And as students in Schoology fill out more of their grades, if I sync them, they will automatically come into Infinite Campus underneath that aligned sub that aligned grade. You only have to align the assignment one time, and Schoology and Infinite Campus will remember which thing goes to which thing. However, if you create a new assignment, you will have to align that assignment again inside of Infinite Campus. The thing to remember is that if you have an assignment that is going to be graded inside of Schoology, that all the parameters for that assignment need to be set correctly inside of Schoology. You do not want to have to edit these after they are created. So make sure that anything that you make inside of Schoology that will be syncing across the Infinite Campus is set correctly while that assignment is still in Schoology before you sync it. I'm now going to show you several different ways that you can share materials between your courses. I'll start with the simplest and most direct way. I'm going to add a folder in this concert band class. I'm going to name it Fun Music. All music should be fun. Make it green. Create. Now we just have a folder. There's nothing in here right now, but that's okay. I want to send this folder from my one section of my Blue One Concert Band class to the other. You can see I have two of the same sections. So it's currently in my beginning section. I want to send it to the intermediate section. So here is Fun Music. I go to the gear icon, and if I left click on it, I get lots of options. And one of those options is to copy to courses. I'll grab that one and find my other B1 band class and select it and hit copy folder. This will automatically create that same folder in my other class and any items that are here will be copied across. It's important to know though that these two folders are now two independent folders. Any updates that you make inside of one will not update in the other. So if you've created a very large assignment that has lots of internal work or assignments or links or PDFs or whatever else, wait until you have completely built that assignment or that folder out before you copy it to your other courses. Otherwise, you would have two separate things. I'll demonstrate that. So here's my beginning band one class. And if I add just a simple assignment here, which I'll call example, I'm going to just create it. Oh, it wants a category and a due date and all the stuff, of course. Schoology, go to Schoology. So here you can see inside of my beginning band class, we have fun music with this example. However, if I go to intermediate concert band, which still has that same fun music, it does not have that file that I just created here. You would need to wait until you build out all the material that you want inside of this folder before you share it across to the other ones. Allow me to show you another way to achieve a similar result. Instead of going into the Courses tab, now I'm going to go to Resources. And here I am going to add a resource, add a folder. I'm going to again create something called Fun Music, but we'll name this one Fun Music 2 so that it's different. And we'll make it pink. Create. Now I'm working on the same folder, but it's inside of my resource tab and not inside of my courses. 
I'm now going to create just another quick little assignment here. Tell me more. This is just a simple assignment that is now inside of my resource. So once I've built out this folder, I get an option that is unique to resources. If I go over here to my gear, I can select add to course. If I click add to course, I can now send this to any of my classes. I'm going to send this to my O1 and B1 band classes. So if I provide it with all the information that it wants, both a due date, a category, you can see that this will create both of these assignments with different due dates in both of these folders. Now I go back to my courses. My blue one course now has a assignment called Tell Me More that is due on a certain day where the students would be able to fill things out. And my orange one has a different one with a different due date. This allows you, using your resource tab, to create materials for your students and then send them out to various courses with different information inside of them. This can be very useful if you're teaching the same class but with multiple different blocks or sections. And you would like each of those to have its own customizable and different version of the same thing. Now again, this is not going to live update. You have to have all the information that you need fully completed before you send this to your course, before you add to course. However, this can be a big time saver and will still allow you to keep customization options and differentiation options for each of your courses, but only needing to do the work one time. Let me show you how you can set up different grading groups inside of a single class. This could be very useful if you have assignments that you want to only give to a certain group of students, maybe who are on a different differentiation path, or perhaps you have some EL students you want to get a slightly different version of a test, this is how you can do this. So I'm in here inside of my Flex and I'm going to create a group that will have different instruments so different instrument groups can get different work. To do all this, I'm going to Courses, selecting my Flex, going to Members, and then here you can see there's a little button that says Add Grading Group. I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to name it Clarinets. And I'm going to select a few of my students who happen to play the clarinet. And I will create that grading group. You can see that I now have a group over here to the side. And if I click on it, you can see the students who are inside of it. If I back out of here and go into my regular course, I can now add a material and add assignment. And all the way down here at the bottom, there's this, these three little buttons that say individually assign. If I click that, I get a box that says assign to. Now you could assign this to an individual student. And if you start typing, you'll see that the students who are inside that class will show up. If I do this to an individual student, only that student will be sent that assignment. That could be useful, but groups are much, much better. If I search for now clarinets, you can see the group that I created shows up. And I can send this to multiple groups. I can make this assignment and do all the normal things, but this assignment now will only show up to that specific group. You can do this not just with assignments, but also with assessments, so a test. You can find those three buttons and assign that specific version of that test to a certain group. This means that you can have different groupings for different tests. So if you are worried about test security, Maybe you have two or three different versions of a test that are very slightly different from each other that you assign to different student groups. Perhaps you have different abilities of students who will get a test that is easier or harder depending on the circumstances that they are in. Perhaps you have a test that is meant for virtual students and one that is meant for physical students. All of this can be done by setting up member groups inside of your course. I hope these have been helpful for you. I'm going to try to make one of these simple sort of tutorial videos on different programs at least once a week. So if there's other topics that you'd like to see covered, feel free to email me and I'll try to get these out to you as much as I can. I want to try to be as helpful as I can to you folks. Okay, you're doing an amazing job out there. Keep it up. I believe in you.